I got the invite to the Firefly Beta. Let's test it out together. You'll be able to create images like this, and this, and this one, this one, and even this one. It's looking pretty cool. Let's get into it. So it only took me about a day to get the invite. I don't think they're making people wait very long. So I hope you do get the invite very soon. And this is the interface. It is a web interface as opposed to mid journey. That's something I really liked about Leonardo.ai. You can check out my review of Leonardo.ai right here. And I really do prefer a web interface. It's just a lot more easy to use than Discord, having to type out prompts multiple times, copy pasting a lot. It really takes a lot of that complexity out of it. And Firefly has done an incredible job of taking all the settings that you normally are typing out manually each time in mid journey and just making them little UI elements. So I really appreciate that. There's two main features with Adobe Firefly. First, we have text to image, the same thing you're very used to with mid journey, with Leonardo, with all of the other AI generative art out there. And then we have a new one that I've not seen anywhere else, text effects, which is basically applying styles or textures to the text with a text prompt. One thing that I've seen Leonardo.ai and even Midjourney do pretty poorly is adding text into the image. Usually when I say, write this text in the image, it doesn't come out like I want it to. It's usually some alien looking text. That's not why you're here. You wanna actually see how it performs. So let's check it out. Text to image, I click generate. It automatically brings me to a page with a bunch of other examples for inspiration. Let's take a look at some of them. The prompt is colorful butterfly on a sidewalk or busy street, lots of people, night, macro photography, shallow depth of field, DSLR, vivid, muted, misty. These look pretty amazing actually. Let's click into one of them. The detail is great. The reflections are excellent. I really like this. Let's look at another one. Here we go. This one is really cool too. The antennae here don't really look real, but still looks pretty cool. There's another one, there's another one. Let's take a look at another one. Here's an interior architecture image. And this is something that is quite popular in mid journey. I'd say this looks pretty good. This is missing some detail, looks a little bit awkward. Some of the plants kind of look blurred together. This one looks really good. Let's take a look at another one. Yeah, this one looks pretty good. Some artifacts right there under the table, but the lighting looks really good. Some blurriness in the chandelier. The drapes don't quite connect under the plant. So could be better. This one looks really nice. Lots of detail. I love the light coming in through the windows. Really cool. And let's take a look at the actual interface. So we're gonna type something out. Puppies flying through the air wearing a space helmet. And so I mentioned at the beginning that Adobe did a great job of taking a lot of really common prompts and actually putting them as UI elements. So that's what you're seeing over here. Now you can have the aspect ratio as a dropdown, as opposed to actually having to type dash dash AR. And you can have content type. So whether you want photo, like photorealistic, art, graphic, or none, it defaults to art, which I find interesting. Let's see what happens when we click none. Okay, yeah, pretty good. Let's see photo. Doesn't look too different, but you know, overall these look really good, especially for its first version in beta. Try one more graphic. Yeah, this one looks really cool. You also have different styles that you can select from, movements, themes, concepts. So you can click these and get different styles automatically with little examples. So here's steampunk style and that's really cool. And usually again, you would be typing all of these out manually. You can see they've been added right here at the bottom below the prompt. You can actually X them out if you'd like. You can set the color and tone. You can set the lighting, which again, this is something that I would be typing out every single time in mid journey. I always appreciate a UI interface. And the last one is composition. So wide angle, close up, blurry background. Let's try that. One thing I noticed about Firefly, which is really impressive is how fast it is where mid journey V4 and even V5 you can wait, you know, 30 seconds, even a minute. A lot of these images are popping up in a matter of seconds, and it's been really impressive. I have noticed sometimes that one of the images might be missing and you just have to click again to regenerate it, but overall, they appear really fast. All right, now let's test out a new feature that I haven't seen anywhere else, text effects. I really like this. So text effects allows you to type out any text you want and then also describe an effect to apply to the text. So I'm actually gonna try one of these examples. So I really like this gingerbread decoration. So I'll type my name and there it goes. And it's filling them in one by one. These do tend to take a little bit longer than the images, which is surprising. You also have some sample effects that come with it. Flowers, snake, driftwood, bread toast, which is funny. Let's click that. Balloon and wires. You can also say how you want the effect to fit the text. So you want it right on the text. You want it a little bit off the text, a little bit blurry. And then if you want it loose, so here it is. That looks really weird. 
but very cool. You can have different fonts, obviously, and then you can have different background colors. So let's try, instead of bread toast, I'm gonna do stars and planets. And there it is. It actually gives me more of a, a an underwater vibe on some of these. They look like barnacles, snails, sea stars, but still very cool. I want, and then you can have a transparent background. Let's try one of the sample effects, flowers. And now at the bottom, it also gives you different versions that you can click through. I find this really cool. This is great for logos, for fonts, this could be great for a lot of different things. Let's try snake, very cool. It has like a, a snake scale, iridescent look. I think that looks really, really beautiful. And you can copy it to your clipboard, you can submit it to the Firefly Gallery, you can report it if you need to, and then of course you can download it as well. One thing about downloading it is, is it does apply a watermark to all of the images, which, which is not a big deal, but the purpose is kind of interesting. When I first went to download it, it gave me a pop-up that told me, we're gonna apply a watermark that tells people that this was an AI generated image. I think Adobe is possibly trying to walk a fine line between really catering to artists who might be a little bit afraid of uh, generative art with AI and actually wanting to adopt this innovation. So they're really making sure people know, yeah, this was created by an artist or this was created by artificial intelligence. I don't mind it. So here's a few more examples. Cheese popcorn, here's shaggy fur, chocolate chip cookies, and being part of the beta, you can come up to the top right, click the little beaker, submit an idea, report a bug, or visit the beta community. They have a Discord, so go ahead and join that if you get in the beta, see what other people are making. And of course, come here, click gallery, and see some of this amazing art that people are generating. Look at this one. Very cool. The grass looks incredibly real. And so let's take a look at the rest of the features that are coming. There does seem to be quite a few. First is one coming soon. This is the only one listed as coming soon. Recolor vectors. So create unique variations of your artwork from a detailed text description. So I think it's, you have a vector image and then you tell it how you want it to change it and it does. Here are some of the other features that are in exploration, which means they're probably just getting it to work. In painting, so this is something we've seen elsewhere. Use a brush to add, remove, or replace objects in an image. Generate the new fill with a text prompt. So in this example, they have a bug and they're removing its wings. Next is personalized results. I believe what this is, is training your own models, which is pretty cool. So in this example, they've uploaded a bunch of images of a dog and you can actually teach the AI about that. Next is something called text to vector. So basically you type in some text prompt and it spits out a vector image. Here's another one that we've seen some beginnings of elsewhere, extend image. This is very similar to Leonardo's canvas. I don't think Mid Journey has a feature like this, but essentially you have an image and if you wanna expand past what the actual image includes, you can do that. 3D to image, this is something that I've seen a lot of lately. You have a 3D image, even a rough untextured image, and you could tell it, hey, make it into a gingerbread house, which is what you're seeing here, or make it into a painting. So that's pretty cool. Here's another one. I have seen this elsewhere, text to pattern. You get tiling patterns. You could do this in Leonardo. I believe you could do this in Mid Journey as well. And here's another one that's very unique to Adobe. Text to brush. Generate brushes for Photoshop and Fresco from a detailed text description. So you're able to actually generate the brush from a description and then export it to Photoshop and use it. That is pretty cool and obviously very, very unique to Adobe. Here's another one, sketched image. I think I've seen this elsewhere. Turn simple drawings into full color images. That seems pretty straightforward. And the last one, text to template. So write a text prompt and it spits out a template that you can use for promotions or really anything else that you'd like to use it for. So that's it for today. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you have any of your own images, please feel free to share them. I'd love to see them. If you liked this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and check out some of my other videos coming up now.